Well, do you still not understand <laughs> what Jesus is getting at here? Uh, the 12 signifies the 12 tribes of Israel. The seven is representing the, the seven kind of, I don't know, maybe nations of the world, but the more of a Gentile type of illusion that Jesus is going to feed both the, the Israelites and the Gentiles. That's kind of what he's getting at here. And um, much harder for us to kind of understand today without the, all the, the Jewish context and illusions that we're unaware of. But for Jesus' disciples, they should have picked it up immediately. Uh, but on to the first reading here. So um, we're going to get the story of Noah. I, I, I kind of did, did a little forward thinking here. Uh, the story of Noah today, tomorrow, and Thursday. So I'm not going to give you everything at once, um, or else I'll just give you the same homily three times. But um, so let me just tell you how the book is, is, is broken up here in Genesis. The first 11 chapters. The first five chapters is the story of Adam and Eve creation uh, and their descendants. So we left off yesterday with the story of Cain killing Abel. Okay, the two sons of Adam, one kills the other. Again, shows you how quickly the downfall of sin has become. Okay, Adam and Eve brought sin into the world, and this horrific pattern continues really downfall quickly with the two sons. So once Cain kills Abel, Cain receives his punishment, but is not killed. He will be, again, he will have many descendants. Uh, they have a third son that we know of, or at least that scripture tells us. We assume there's probably more sons and daughters, uh, and that is of Seth, okay? So Seth is important because he's gonna be part of that generational line that Noah is becoming. So whenever we're represented with a good person and a bad person, and we learn about their descendants uh, in the Old Testament, uh, the bad person are gonna have bad descendants, and generally the good person are gonna have good descendants. That's kind of how scripture uses these genealogies here. So from Seth, the good one, we get Noah. From Cain, okay, we get a lot of wicked descendants, including this one by the person of Lamach, okay? He's kind of described as the most horrific of them, where he brags about killing lots of people. Uh, and on top of that, he's the first one, at least that's mentioned in scripture, that takes on multiple wives, okay? So obviously he's not a very bright person, okay? All right, one wife is plenty, right? All right, all right, all right. don't hurt, don't hurt, I'm just kidding, don't hurt me, okay? All right. So he's the first one to practice polygamy, okay, in all this. And again, scripture doesn't tell us that it's wrong, but it, it's, it's more like just saying, hey, you know, this guy's breaking, in a very subtle way, breaking uh, the, the command of just taking one wife. So with that, though, we have good descendants, we have bad descendants, but eventually what happens is what? The influence of the bad descendants takes over the good descendants. And so now the whole earth, is wicked. And again, scripture tells us in a very concise way, the Lord sees how great the wickedness of man is on earth, that there's no desire in his heart except for evil. So it's trying to give us a condition that right now the human race is so far off that there's not even one good or healthy desire in one's heart. It's just nonstop evil, bad, sinful things. And it's trying to paint us the picture that if there was something good in there, that God would preserve it. And in fact, he does. Noah and his sons. He sees the good in there, and he's going to keep it, and he's going to try to eliminate anything that is not good, anything that is moral evil he wishes to overcome. And in fact, he will. As we see throughout our whole salvation history, including our own sins and our own life, what does our Lord do? He washes them away. But he keeps the good that is in within us. And so as we continue on in this story of, of Moses, there's a couple other things that I will continue in the next couple of days. Like, for example, why seven pairs of clean animals and one pair of unclean? I'll talk about that in the next couple of days. But right now we, we learn and we remember uh, the power of the goodness of God, it will overcome evil. 
You know, and we look at the world and we get discouraged of just uh, how far off, you know, the human race has become in terms of matters of life and, and matters of marriage and matters of, of gender and, uh, and sexuality, all those things. It's just, it just seems so just contrary to the plan and design of God. And it seems to be coming increasing. Uh, but we just must know the power of the goodness of God, that it will overcome everything that is contrary to the good. May God bless you.